there, and welcome back to Chit and Chat, the encouraging one dollar podcast. And I'm beyond blessed. Many guests I've had on the five past five six months, and have uh, received more responses from people who want to be on the show. And and I just I'm so thankful for you listening in this for this podcast. And uh, as I'm sharing uh, musicians' uh, songs from their albums and letting you uh, hear full songs, I think this podcast is unique. I think most podcasts don't do that. So when you hear full songs of musicians, and hey, you go check them out on their websites and YouTube videos. I just love sharing uh, their music with you. And, uh, you know, my podcast range from about 45 minutes to an hour. I know some are a little longer than that. But you know what? If you're driving to work, to and from work, and you're stuck in traffic, don't do the podcast. Maybe you run your kids to and from soccer practice or football practice. Throw in the podcast. I appreciate any feedback you would have, hopefully positive. And I have to be honest with you, my other, earlier interviews, I know we're a bit rusty, <clears throat> but I've, I think I'm getting better. I feel I'm getting better in my interview process and asking questions. And will I ever, ever, ever have a perfect podcast? Probably not. Who knows? I'll sum with the words and, and you can guarantee though, each podcast I'll do is trying to bring encouragement to you. So thank you for those who have listened one, two, or all the episodes. On this show today, we'll have music by Hunter Lott, Can't Wait for the Day, who I'll have the chance to interview, Kirsty Krause, Just One More, and Cherry Keggy Song, Restoration Song, which is a powerful song. Hunter Lott was born in the great state of Mississippi, and he now resides in Henderson, Tennessee. He discovered his love for guitar and piano and singing at the age of 16 and knew immediately what he wanted to do. He's only 22 years old and already completed his first Western movie. We'll discuss that too. I'm so excited to interview this young man and he is definitely going places. And when he's not writing songs or in the, you know, performing songs, you'll find him out hunting and fishing. There's a strong faith and praising God for his success. I'm so excited today to have on country singer and actor... Hunter Lot today on Chit and Chat, the encouraging one of the podcast. This is Hunter Lot. Can't wait for that day. No 
Hunter Lott. Can't wait for that day. I apologize for parts of this interview. Uh, our phone cut out a few times, but uh, hope you enjoy the interview with Hunter Lott. This is Chin Chat. Encouraging one another podcast. Hey, hey. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you? I'm not too bad, so. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing all right, man. Staying busy. All right. Yeah, you. I see. Uh, you're on the road and doing things all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot. Got a lot going on. Uh, I did a, a brief introduction for you already. I got it recorded and all souped up, so it'll be nice when you hear it. But uh, so was welcome, uh, Hunter Lot, to the Chit and Chat and Curry as country singer and now actor. I'm excited to pick his brain and yep. hear who he is. Yep, let's do it. I know you've been extremely busy doing concerts and award shows and go, go, go. But oh, yeah. the first few five, six questions are going to be off the wall. Uh, and we'll see what you got. All right. All right. I like those kind of. All right. If you had to wear a shirt with one word on it for a year, what word would it be and why? It would, uh, oh, that's a great question. One shirt, all right, so shirt with one word on it. Yes, sir. It would say love. Love. Why is that? Uh, I try to love everything I do. And I also try to show love and appreciation for everybody else. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, what's the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning before you get going? What's the first thing that kind of comes to mind when you do? Uh, I don't want to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and that's, I mean, quite literally, the first thing that comes to my mind is, no, I don't want to. <laughs> do I have to get up? <laughs> Every time. I keep away too, man. I'm 51, man. I, I, I got you know, aches and pains. I'm like, I don't want to get out. I don't want to get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> no, I... I I feel it. If if it wasn't that, I would get up and be like, "All right, I got to go downstairs and I got to go make my morning drink." You know. So, uh, what's your morning drink? It's some green tea with a little bit of lemon in it and honey. Right. That's okay for your throat. It's yeah. kind of staying. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not a coffee drinker, so I just use it as a little. Uh, we're, bit we're done. We're done. Podcast. Come- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not a coffee guy, so I use something, some sort of alternative for energy in the morning. Okay, do you drink sweet tea? Yes. Okay, we're friends. Yeah. Yeah. I grew I, up in I, South born Mississippi. Raised... I can't not drink tea. Yeah, I was born in Arkansas. And so yeah, I'm, I'm with you. My wife is actually born in Pasagula. Yeah, I I didn't like it when I was little though. My whole childhood. And it's been a teenage years, I didn't like it. Oh, really? Yeah, but as I got older I started to like it. More sugar, more tea. <laughs> the more sugar the better. There you go. Uh what was the first concert you ever attended? Uh, oh, I can't remember which one it was. I, oh yeah, I can. Never mind. I lied. Uh, I went to a Brad Paisley concert when I was very young. Okay. Uh, Taylor Swift was the first opening act for that concert. 
that was back when she had like just had released her first album. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and then Rodney Atkins was the second act. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. And then Brad Paisley had his whole, you know, two hour long concert at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what meal would that be? It'd be Masaman curry, Thai food. Thai food? Are you like, like spicy food? Yeah, well, spicy. I like food a little a bit of kick, enough where it's just some good flavoring. Okay. If yeah, it's blowing my mouth off, then I really don't. <laughs> I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've never been to Nashville, Tennessee, but I've been to Knoxville back in 1980. I went to the, the World's Fair. If I was to come down and visit you, we will do hang out for some supper. Look at that supper. Uh, dinner or supper. <laughs> where are we going? In, in, Na- in Nashville, where are we going to eat? Uh, mm, that's very interesting. That's a good question. Unfortunately, I haven't spent a lot of time eating in restaurants in Nashville, so I don't know what's like. Oh, I tell you what, though, there's like, there's a little restaurant, uh, where around where I live, a little bit outside Nashville. As uh, so you go go up. There's a. Do you like fish? Yes. You broke up a little bit. Do you like fish? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I love I fish. Prob- I would probably take you to a fish house, man, that I found. Works for me. And it's bomb, especially because I didn't have like a good fish house for like two years. You know, growing up in Mississippi, we had a lot of them, but then we came here and we found what I think is like the best one I've ever ate. And it's they got hush puppies. Oh yeah, they have everything. <laughs> They have everything. Hush puppies with the turnip greens. They have the best tartar sauce I've ever tried. So it's it's incredible. Mm, get me hungry. No, oh, me too. <laughs> if, you could do a, if you could do a concert with three musicians, past or present, uh, you you can have this up there with three other people, your, your legends. Who are your, the three people on stage with you? I would do a concert with James. Um. Then I would do a concert with, oh boy, <laughs> man. So yeah, I'd go James Hetfield first. And who's James? Then I would go, then I would go with Brad Paisley. And then I would go with Brantley Gilbert. Okay. Sounds good. You'd be rocking the house. Yep. Uh, for my listeners out there who might not know who you are, can you share a little brief bio about yourself, where you're from? Except- well, I, I grew up in South Mississippi, lived there for 22 years and, uh, came up here to Nashville chasing my dream and, uh, started doing music when I was 16, uh, posting YouTube covers and things like that. And then, you know, eventually it just built up and led up to where I sang a national anthem in front of 6,000 people at Mississippi State University. And then... It just took off from there, you know. I started getting started writing, made an EP, started uh, working with some with some deals and some record labels, and uh, then I hired into the Tootsie Circuit. Now I'm here up in Nashville, you know, just doing my thing. Now I'm away from the Broadway scene, but I'm touring everywhere and uh, doing lots of shows. I've got my own set of band members now, and uh, I'm an actor as well, so. Uh, shooting a movie. I've only I've only shot one movie, but I've auditioned for a ton, and I'm good plan on doing more. And I'm definitely going to get more roles in the future. And it's a lot of fun. I have a lot going. I'm talking to a country of music and a, a, a TV a movie actor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I began researching you, reading about you, the first thing I noticed when I pulled up your website uh, was Philippians four thirteen. Yes. I can do all. Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. How is that important to you? It's very important to me because I always put God first in front of everything I do, especially when, you know, when I'm faced with a tough decision, I always trust God and I always trust him completely. And I don't look back, mm-hmm. you know, cause he's always going to be opening doors for me 
And it's also, it may not be doors that I'm supposed to go in, but he opens them for me anyways. So I trust God to redirect me if I don't go through that. If that door is not something I want to be a part of, he opened that door to teach me, mm. you know? So, yeah, yeah. so then you know, I always, I always put God first. I have that, that Bible verse tattooed on my arm as well. Oh, nice. So it's, I've always lived by, lived by that. And I've never, never backed down from anything. And I've always been able to push forward because of God and because of my parents supporting me. Uh, did you grow up in the church? I did. I did. What right did they consider country music over Christian music? Um, you know, honestly, it was, I'm a big old, big mixture of me. Uh, I grew up listening okay. to heavy metal. Uh, wow. <laughs> I, I know so, yeah so i was a huge that's my dad's fault i was a huge metallica fan growing up <laughs> and um i mean i still am today if you take me to a metallica concert today i'm gonna know every song they play um okay and that's what happened like when i learned to play guitar uh with the first two weeks of me playing guitar i was i was uh playing metallica licks and <laughs> so it's you know, but I liked singing as well. And I've always liked country music. I've always liked, like my first concert was a country concert. So I've always liked it um, a lot, but I, I sing Christian music as well. Uh, I've done lots of Christian covers and, uh, but co country music, I've just, I've always loved country music because it's just me when it comes down to it. I'm, I'm very like good with people, mm -hmm. but I'm just a small town boy, even though I live in this huge city now. I've always just been, I want to stay inside or I want to go outside and go fishing or go hunting. And if I'm not doing that, I'm inside just hanging out, playing yep. my writing, you know, nothing different. Man, I haven't been fishing a long time, man. We moved from Arkansas. And, you know, I used to go fishing with my dad and my grandparents. I haven't been fishing forever. I mean, I miss the quiet days on, my, on the boat with my grandma and grandpa, minnows exactly. and worms and just, just catching brim and, and whatever, just enjoying the lake, man. I miss those days. Yep. Ripping some lips. <laughs> When did the music bug hit you when you were growing up? What, was it going to age or? I... Um, it, it's really due to my, it was probably when I was 16. I, I, I had a guitar when I was eight, but I didn't learn anything about it because I was too much of scatterbrained to actually <laughs> learn how to correctly play the instrument. So when I was 16, I found that guitar again and I was in sports and everything, but I honestly, I sucked at sports. So uh that's just i found that guitar in in my closet after i moved back to my old house and packing and unpacking everything and my grandfather passed away which he was that was really when he passed away it was very suddenly and he was very important to our family so it was you know it was a real setback and it was probably the darkest time in my life and when i had the guitar i think it the guitar healed me when I was learning to play it, it was the exact same time. So I think singing and playing guitar really healed me and helped that process. And of course my mom uh, got hit way, way worse than I did. And then my parents did, then my dad did uh, whenever my grand. Um, and so she's always, she'll tell you the same thing. She said that she'll say that my music and my singing has saved her. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I think, I think that's what sparked it. You know, I think, at first, it was a maybe it was an unconscious distraction that turned into a total passion. And music is so powerful. I mean, it could it could bring up memories from long ago. You know, I I I was born in nineteen seventy. I I love seventies music. I don't know what it is about seventies a lot to it over the past you know eight ten years. But man, I love seventies and eighties music. And just a lot of memories in those in that in that time frame. I love seventies music as well. Uh, what was your first song you sang? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, first, the first song I ever learned how to play on guitar. I know that for sure. All right, go ahead. Uh, I I played just the four chords of "Boulevard of Broken Dreams" by Green Day because it was an easy song as a beginner. Just the chords, so I definitely remember that. And I probably sang it too. Uh, but then two weeks later, I was playing Inner Sandman, Master of Puppets, you know, really heavy electric guitar stuff. And then it might have been 
a Luke Combs song, honestly, might have been the first cover I posted on YouTube. So we'll go with that. Okay. Uh, do you perform? Do you prefer acoustic more than the the band, or is there kind of even keel? Hmm. I well, I don't know. So they're both. I like the show more of a band. For the band, you have a whole different set list. There's a lot of songs that are just don't sound good without a band. They right. don't sound good acoustically. No matter how hard you try, they're just not going to be as big. And it's just going to be the singer is going to be way up top like the song is, but the, you got an acoustic guitar in your hand that doesn't do the job. So it's like, but at the same time, a personal connection with the acoustic guitar and just the singer, you know, and singing some slower songs is a whole different feel and it has the same power as a big band performance mm -hmm. in a way. So, you know, for small gigs, I wouldn't go with a band. I would go with an acoustic because you get to really sit down as well. I get to take my time with acoustics. I get to talk to people because I'm not focused on necessarily putting on the show. Right. I'm, I'm just, I'm interacting with people. I'm building connections and I'm uh, connecting with those people I'm talking to. I can talk to this table. I can talk to these people just have a conversation with them. And I'm still doing, doing my thing for the band. It's like a song after the other, and it's a crazy good show and we take requests and everything. So I don't know if I have a preference. Um, I think there's a different vibe. There's a right and wrong place for both scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, during your career, have you had a mentor or someone who really encouraged you in your, your young career? You know, maybe you like you stumbled a little bit and maybe you weren't sure in some directions. You have a mentor help you along the way? Well, I can tell you my parents, I'm the only musical one in my family. I mean, my dad did play the trumpet when he was in high school, I think, or college. I don't remember. He was in a marching band. But I have never had a vocal teacher. I've never had a guitar teacher either. Um, but if I had to say mentors, you know, I would not be as far as I am without my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. Especially my mom. My mom pushes me way past the point of where I want to, like, of my work ethic. So I, I, I have my work ethic built in me, you know, but she's like, she has been the key to unlocking the 100% of it, you know, because she's pushing me. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, she's, she's, they've, they've been my backbone for my whole career. So it's. What's I, your parents' names? My mom's name is Melissa. My dad's Hello. name is Bill. Bill? Okay. Good old Bill. <laughs> uh, of all your songs that you've written, you have a personal favorite? Yes. What's that? I can't wait for that day. It's a personal oh. favorite. Your grandpa's song, right? Yeah, it is. Oof. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. I listened to it several times. It's a, it's a very, very powerful. Uh, it's, yeah. I'm first, but I wasn't sure. So, yeah, I definitely I would agree. I've listened to several of your songs, and that's, yeah, it hits uh, heartstrings for sure. Yeah. I, it took me a long time to write that song. So it's, it's a weird story. People say it's like, it realistically, it took me 15 minutes to write it. It all hit me at once. Like it took me 15, literally 15 minutes to write it. Um, but then again, I wrote it three years after he passed away. Mm. So then some people will say, you know, it took you three years to write that song, you know, and things like that. So it, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely my favorite song. I think that's my most important song for me. Um, it's definitely the one I've had the most connection to, and yeah, it wrote itself. Maybe it was like three years of grieving. You really had to ponder it and think about it, and, and you know, God's like, you know what? Three years. It's, that's a good time to write this particular song. Yeah, I I still uh, have not learned how to drive a stick shift because he was going to teach me. My grandfather was going to teach me. Mm -hmm. So one of my dreams is to not learn how to drive a stick and wait one day. Hopefully I pass on and go to heaven and he teach me in heaven one day. Oh, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He would. How do you write? Very, very suddenly, you know. When you write songs, are they inspirational? They come to mind or experiences or what? Yeah, um, I've, I, I have dabbled in the arts of non-inspirational songwriting and um, – it turns out as you would expect. Like maybe it's got a good beat to it, but then you end up like a lot. I have a bunch of songs that I have written that are not recorded or not released, and mainly because like two, like two or three of those songs are just terrible, <laughs> and they'll never come out. 
<laughs> so uh, that's because it's just I need. I was just writing a song and it's just stupid. And there's no inspiration by it. So most of the songs I would say they have to have a little inspiration. Even one that that uh, like front porch swing is not me. I have not been through what uh, what I go through in front porch swing. In that song, I talk about having my own child and everything. I don't have one. You know, I I pictured myself in the future without my parents and it turned out to be a sad song i didn't write it that way um but that's just how the vibe came out to be in the end but mm -hmm. it's really like a happy remembering remorseful song so you know when i walk outside and i'm on the front porch and there's a swing there i'm gonna have all those memories type deal so every song you know that i think i've written and put out has been inspirational somewhere or another i always reflect back or think about deep things that i've experienced do you remember your first concert and where you performed at? My first one. Sir. <laughs> so I don't, my first live performance was at a radio station. Okay. Uh, it had a Bud Light Wiser, a Bud Light Wiser, a Bud Light. That's spotlight. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Bud Light Spotlight event. That's what it's called. It was on Friday and it was just the local country radio station for Meridian, Mississippi. And it was, uh, it was live. So they had a live interview and I sang three songs as well, live with the guitar, you know, over the radio. And that was my first performance that I had. Um, after that, I sang multiple national anthems, including the one at Mississippi State versus Arkansas. Hey. Yep. The opening SEC basketball game, Mississippi State versus Arkansas is the first big national anthem I had. And um, who won? <laughs> you know, probably Arkansas. <laughs> probably like, I don't remember but yeah probably uh, but uh, that was definitely my first performance was that radio station and then I had a lot more national anthem performances after that uh, during your career you've had an opportunity to meet music legends yeah can you name a few of those you've met and what the experience was like so I haven't met a couple of legends, but well, okay, okay. So I have met some old timey legends. So I met Rodney McDowell and T.G. Shepard. Um, I met um, Artemis Pyle from Leonard Skinner. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as I've seen celebrities and legends from the Broadway scene, not really as well as I met them. Okay. Uh, I've seen Ashley McBride. I've had a conversation with her for you know 40 seconds because it was we're on broadway so it's just crazy packed uh but um, a lot of the real uh those are the real main legends i have i have met has been like ashley mcbride is popular um and i met tg shepherd paul Everstreet, and rodney mcdowell and um but i, I as a lot of those big time country stars today uh instrument players play for me as well you know i I played on stage a lot with Tanya Tucker's fiddle player. I played a lot with Luke Combs, lead guitar player. Mm. Um, Billy cool. Curtin's lead guitar player as well. Uh, I've played with a lot of musicians that have played with those legends, though. Um, at the International uh, Singer Songwriter Association Award, that's a big word. Yeah. You want, can you tell us about that experience? Yeah, so I did. I won. Uh, I won gold album of the year, and that was an amazing experience because I have known so many of those people for so many years, and I've never gotten the chance to meet, you know, a third of them. And that was my favorite part about it. I was really excited to go to the awards because I really just wanted to meet everybody mm -hmm. for the first time. You know, if I, I it was absolutely great, and I'm honored that I won, but. I, I actually went there with the mindset too. I hope I win, but if I don't, it's okay because I'm gonna meet everybody. Like right. I'm gonna get to hang out. So we had the we had the pre party dinner. I met a ton of people there, and the you know the award ceremony itself was awesome. It was really good to see some people, you know, getting the awards that they've worked really really hard for, and that was a really really amazing experience. It was very positive. The whole thing was just was well done, well put together, as well to a friend of yours and they uh, gave me a quote to, to share with you. I'll tell you who they are. I have to read the quote. Uh, Hunter is a great guy. He is so kind and down to earth. So hardworking. They're happy to see you sharing your gift 
and you're wishing you the best and uh, your continued success. And you're a really great guy and so genuine. That's very nice. Hart. It's Robbie Hart said that. Okay. See, I met I, I've met Robbie at the ceremony, and I met her daughter as well. They are awesome. I have Robbie Hart on next week, actually. But so it just it was I I've been talking to her. I go, I need a little brief little little thing about Hunter, and so she's cheered with that. So she goes, there, there you go. <laughs> uh, she's 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 the sweetest man. She really is. She's really really down to earth, and just in in person too. She's just a ball of sunshine, you know. So yeah, well, I'll, I'll I'll text you offline, and we'll make you share some words about her as well. <laughs> do it. I'll do it. I'll catch you offline. Uh, I ask uh, to share the uh, salsa pictures of you from the event. You share you talk, you talk about your tattoo, right? Yeah. Uh, a little more details about that. So my most important one is the one you can't see. Um, the most important one I have is on my right wrist about my grandfather. I have one. You know, when we were little kids, my me and my cousin or my sister wouldn't eat or drink after each other because we thought it was gross and we had germs. And my grandfather thought it was uh, the dumbest thing. So he used to he used to grab us by our veins on our wrist and he would tell us we have the same blood in our veins, you know, and then he started doing that for everything else. Like me being protective of my older sister, things like that. He would Mm -hmm. tell me things like that, too. So whenever he passed away, when I was 18, uh, I got that tattooed on my right wrist. We've got the same blood in our veins and quotes and I put his signature underneath it. Mm. That is definitely my most important tattoo, but I have one. On my wrist that has some arrows that says my sister's protector. She's got a matching one that with that's a key, and it says my brother's keeper, and it's spelled like that, like key E Y. And I have a microphone. I have a big guitar head, and uh, I didn't want to put a brand like Fender or Gibson on my arm permanently, so I put my <laughs> signature, you know, instead. Where okay. the fuck is? I got some music notes. I have a, a clock on my elbow in Roman numerals. It says nine twenty nine ninety nine. That was the year I was born, and uh, it's like when my time started. That's why there's a clock there. Okay. Um, and yeah, up above that, on around my bicep, Philippians four thirteen in a scroll. I have a prostate cancer awareness tattoo on the back of my elbow because my dad was a prostate cancer survivor. Oh wow! Yeah, so me, my sister, and my mom all went and got matching tattoos that day for that. And then I have just a normal little sun and some clouds and a dove flying on my shoulder. I'm not done. I'm going to get more tattoos. But at the moment, those are all I have. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, has there been someone in your life who has inspired you to do what you do? I'm sure you've met musician, uh, you know, musicians and said, thought to yourself, am I good enough for this? Can I do this? Someone who kind of pushed you through those obstacles. Um. I don't know if I've had a person that has put, pushed me through those obstacles other than my own want. I've mm. seen people. What happened is I, I was I eventually plateaued in guitar where I could play every chord on the fret and I could play. I could learn really hard guitar solos, but I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I just was learning it note for note. Um, and I could capo up the fret, you know, and play guitar and. uh that was about it. And then I wanted to be like those guys is like, how can you just improvise a guitar solo on the spot? How do you do that? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And the, so that's when I really unlocked my skill gap of guitar. Once I finally learned the alphabet, the chromatics, and I learned all my scales, my seal, my, my skill gap of guitar, just the ceiling just opened. And, uh, and then I went to, went to Broadway and even before Broadway, I started playing with a lot of musicians who are just that they've been playing guitar for 20 years and they are just mind blowing how good they are. Mm. And, um, that as well. So it's really the experience and just my want that has really pushed me for it. You know, especially when it comes to guitar for singing, it'd be my mom. Cause my mom's like, you're the singer. You don't have to play guitar. <laughs> like it's great. She's like, it's great you play guitar. I'm like, yeah, I know, Mom, but I just the electric guitar just really gets me going. I can't not do it. Right. You know, so, you know, one of the, one of these days, you know, there's not too many country singers these days that are full on electric guitar country guys. Like the last people to do it were like Keith Urban and like Brad Paisley, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to be 
I, I aspire to be the John Mayer of country music. Oh, nice. You know, so you, so, uh, you starred in the movie. That's that's how did that process start out before we get into any, any, any more details about that. It's, it's just, it's how it's, it might be how you'd expect. I, I approached, I was approached by a movie director who wanted a theme song for his movie. Okay. So that's, uh, that's what happened. So I, I said, yeah. So we had a phone call. He told me a little bit about the plot, told me the vibe of the song he wanted, but so he wanted a Bon Jovi ish, dirty outlaw country song. Uh, but he wanted also the message to be wholesome as well about like, just like the movie is. So I said, okay, well I can do it. So in about two or three weeks, I think I had the song done for him. And then he goes, Hey, he calls me and he goes, Hey, our lead actor has, uh, isn't going to be able to make the shooting at all. He's not going to be a part of it. So how would you like to fill that role? <laughs> I was like, wait, 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 wait. Was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, I was like, you know, I haven't done like any drama classes or anything like that. And he's like, yeah, but you've been in music videos and stuff. I was like, yeah. He's like, we can teach you along the way and you'll be good. You got to look for it. It'll be fine. And I'm like, so I get to shoot people. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And I was like, dude, send me the script right now. So and I, I have to tell you. Making a movie is it, it probably helped that I got that everyone in the cast all got along with each other. We all liked each other. Everybody was goofing around the whole time. It was so much fun. <laughs> it is a lot of setup. You know, we would spend two or three hours of setup to film two or three minutes. Oh, so wow. that's part of movie. You have to have every camera angle right, the sound, all that stuff. But it was it was so much fun. So what's the name of it? It's called Vernon. Okay. And where was it filmed at? It was filmed at a place uh, called Landrum's Country in Laurel, Mississippi. We also filmed a little bit of it in Vernon, Alabama. There's a place called Vernon, Alabama. And they had a really nice, really old, almost abandoned church. It was was pretty much abandoned, but it was well kept by the community. So it wasn't falling apart. It was just, just vintage. So... You know, like the piano, none of it worked in there. The stools were just completely like, if you would imagine what they looked like, just total wooden stools, no cushion. You know, it was, it was cool. It was really cool. So that's why we went to Vernon, Alabama to film those parts of it. And in in Landrum's country, they've got a very Western-y vibe to it, especially Mississippi, like springtime Western film. It's not quite like Tombstone Western in Arizona where it's a desert. It's just how Mississippi would have been back then. It was okay. really, it was really cool, and that's where we filmed it. Tell us a bit about the movie and where can people watch it. So you can go to Tubi to watch it, for sure. Uh, it's on there, and you, if you can't find it, you can go on my website. There'll be a link for it that you, that you can do, and it's free. So, um, but about the movie, it's basically about a kid who is a farmer. And he's not really a bad kid, but he's pretty dumb. We'll just, we'll just say it like that. So, <laughs> so what he does is he gets a gun and he and he starts. He, he's tired of being a farmer and he wants money, so he's he's dirt poor. So he he gets a gun and he starts robbing banks with no intention to hurt anybody. He just wants the money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's pretty stupid, but that's 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 how, that's what happens. And then he gets a girl with him, who is just a sweet, innocent little angel who just wants something exciting in her life and then something really bad goes down halfway through the film and now they're stuck together. Mm. They really like each other, but she, you know, didn't see the red flag because he's not really a bad guy, but he's not doing something. He's doing something that he should not, Mm -hmm. you know, and she didn't see the red flag of that situation when he blatantly told her what he was doing. And yeah, so then they get, they get wanted and they get wanted for these other things. And it's basically a manhunt at that point. And they're trying to survive. And she's stuck in it just because of association. Mm. So that is basically what the movie is about. Okay. Do you have any upcoming projects for other movies you're working on or have in the back burner somewhere? No other movies yet. No other TV shows yet, but, but there will be. Uh, what's your uh, your website? You mentioned your Facebook. What's your website called? Uh... Yeah, uh, you can go to hunterlotmusic.com. That's lot has two T's, like parking lot, but with two T's. So hunterlotmusic.com. Go there, and um, 
that's going to have everything. That's going to have everything about me. That's going to have all my music. That's going to have all of my merch. That's also going to have all the different links. And there'll be a whole thing about Vernon on there as well and a place where you can watch that. So you have a concert up in the Pacific Northwest or have you traveled for concerts? Uh, I haven't traveled too far for my own shows, but I'm about to. I mean, quite literally next year, I'll be in Virginia for the first time. Oh, nice. Uh, going way over there. And then I'm going to be, you know, in Illinois, Indiana here soon. I, there's probably a gig in Wisconsin coming up. So that's going to be cold. And then uh, I've furthest west I've been is Texas. Okay. I haven't made it to, uh, I don't even know where Arkansas is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Is Arkansas north of Mississippi? It is, isn't it? Oh, you're killing me. I think it's somewhere, yeah, it's somewhere there. Yeah, just keep driving south; you'll find it eventually. <laughs> it's northwest of Mississippi. It is. It must be. Probably. Hey, if I had a map, told me I could tell you. I would just go my phone. Sure, did, it's somewhere. I, don't, I did geography in ninth grade, and I didn't care about the states. So, <laughs> <laughs> could you share some words of encouragement with someone out there who is kind of dabbling in singing, or you know, who's kind of. Uh, so many times in today's society, people get bullied, you know, and, and, they, and they get their dreams get shot down. Yeah. Can you encouraging words, urge from someone who uh, can help them through those tough times. The best advice I've ever given to this day has been that I, I've I've developed a really innate ability to recognize poison for poison. Mm. So, poison can come in a dirty cup, but poison can also come in a golden chalice. It doesn't change the fact that it's poison, you know? So if you drink it, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Mm -hmm. So the best thing you can do is always stick to yourself and you always have to do what you want to do. If you try to do anything else or let anybody influence you, and if it doesn't feel right to you, then you don't need to do it. That's not, that's not how you won't be happy that way. So if you're always starting, there's a lot of bullying, a lot, there's a lot of hate. Most of the time I laugh at hate comments. I don't get them as much as I used to. But some of the ones I have gotten, I actually just, I find them hilarious. You know, that some of us even rating, I was like, that's pretty creative. It's a good one. You know, so if you have that shoulder about you, just know that you're, you know, if someone's hating on you, you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. It's not that, uh, it's not that, 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 what you're doing is, is wrong. You always have to keep pushing forward and you always have to recognize the good for bad and just be yourself. If you be yourself and you do what you want to do, it'll all work itself out. It always has. Uh, do you know the Bible verse you want to share? Top of your head? Top of my head, Bible verse. <laughs> is, well, I always say Philippians 4.13. But we talked about that. Dang, I had one the other day. Um. Um. Gosh, you put me on the spot here for this one, man. <laughs> we'll go. We'll go with good old Philippians, okay? All right. Philippians so, four thirteen, man. So much taking time out of your busy schedule, and you're welcome back anytime to promote your songs, albums, heck, your movies. You know, if you're ever in Washington State, if you if you find Washington State on a map, and you come visit, copies on me, and, and uh, I just have the most success. I know you're 22. God's got a great plan. He's given you an amazing gift, and just. Uh, Continued success, protecting you and your family. So thanks so yeah. much for the time. Pre thank you. Le thank you for letting me be on the show. I'm honored, man. I'm honored. You're back. You're welcome back anytime. And uh, just take care of yourself. Thank you. You too, man. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Harlock, and this is Chit and Chat. Encourage you on another podcast. Take care. Hungry? Craving tacos? If it's Tuesday or not, you gotta have tacos, right? Takiza, tacoshop.com. They're located at the Kitsap Mall. They have tacos, tacos, and more tacos, and chimichangas, and burritos, and taco salads. You get it. They have amazing food, as well as beans, and salsa, and grilled jalapenos, my favorite. Their food's authentic, made fresh, and they're locally owned and operated. They got a Facebook page too, 
and a food truck with amazing breakfast burritos. That's Takiza Taco Shop. T-A-Q-U-I-Z-A TacoShop.com Their phone number is 360-698-4335 to place an order. The address is 10315 Silverdo Way, Silverdo, Washington. That's Takiza Taco Shop.com T-A-Q-U-I-Z-A Tacos, tacos, and more tacos are waiting for you. It's a really tough bridge and divide for many veterans when they come home from active service. What we try to do is, is bridge that divide. My name is Brandon Marty, and I am the CEO and managing partner of Veteran Roasters Coffee. There's some great skills that can be transitioned to many different industries within coffee, and coffee's fun. We're all veterans here, veteran-owned, veteran-operated, and so there's a strong connection and trust that we all have in each other through similar service, and we support each other both personally and professionally in that growth. It's all about people here, and my goal is really to help them kind of establish a new life for them and their families, help them understand the benefits and resources available, and really create a pathway to the new phase of their lives. I want to thank Brandon Marty for being a part of the Chit Chat Encouraging One Up podcast. And their company is offering a discount when you buy bags from them. And when you use the code Chit Chat 25, we will receive 25% off. And he said they're uh, all the veterans are working for the company and they help veterans get on their feet, back on their feet, uh, having some tough difficult time when they transition from the military. So just check out Veteran Grocers Coffee. It's coffee with a purpose. Kirstie Krause is a musician I had on a while back and just loves sharing her music. And you can check out Kirstie Krause, it's spelled K-I-R-S-T-I-E, K-R-A-U-S dot com for her music, videos, uh, a tour, what she's going on, where she'll be at. And I want to share with you this song called Just One More.
That was Kersey Krause, just one more. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to interview Sherry Keggy, and she shared about her new album, What I Know To Be True. The song I'm about to play for you called Restoration Song. It's about broken relationships and how beautiful God is to bring healing and restoration out of a loss. God is the God of second chances, and His love can do anything. Hope you enjoy the song by Sherry Keggy, Restoration Song. This is our restoration song. We sing it when we're weak and when we're strong.
look up Sherry Kagi's uh, website. It's sherrykagi.com uh, for her uh, lyrics for her songs and upcoming events. And just a great lady to talk to, an amazing testimony she has. That's Sherry Kagi, Restoration Song. Good morning. Thought I'd add some additional words on this podcast today. Some daily encouragement for you that might help you set a goal that makes you want to jump out of bed every morning. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. C.S. Lewis. Never let the odds keep you from doing what you know in your heart you were meant to do. And sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up being the biggest step of your life. Tiptoe if you must, but take that step. Thank you for being part of the Chit and Chat Encouraging One Other Podcast. Today will be a great interview with Hunter Lott and some amazing musicians who share their music. Thank you also to Raymond Hayden, whose instrumental work in the beginning and the end of this podcast is so amazing. He is a, a, value, a valued friend and an amazing artist. I thank him so much for the contributions he's had to this podcast hope you continue to check out the chit and chat encouraging one of podcast each and every week for amazing guests amazing music and my goal is always to encourage someone somewhere it was a word a song something that can bring you hope encouragement throughout this busy busy life we have we're usually go, go, go. We're usually just on the rush from the time we leave the door to the time we get home and work, work, work and just busyness of life. This podcast, I hope, helps you slow down a little bit and to remind you to encourage someone. And remember, remember someone who's not inspired you in your career, who's given you hope. Share it with someone else. Make encouragement contagious. Spread it with friends and family, co-workers. Don't just hold it to yourself. Let's encourage anyone we come across. This is Chit and Chat. The encouraging one of our podcast. It's always, always about encouraging others. This is Chit and Chat, the encouraging one other podcast. What's all about encouraging others?